Hi, Boris. Hi, hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. Great. So, you must be very, very proud to be the winner of the second prize in the Battle of Yeah, I'm certainly. Which is the, your homeland uh, competition. Uh, so, how do you feel about uh, playing for the Israeli audience again this time? Um, excited as always. That's my homeland audience, and it's one of the warmest audiences in the world. Mm -hmm. um, it's, all, it's also a big responsibility. I don't know why, but playing here in Tel Aviv or Jerusalem or whatever, um, it always has some extra weight to it. Mm -hmm. uh, can you share uh, your thoughts with us about you studying in, uh, in Israel? Uh, versus other pianists who are studying in uh, Europe and the US? Well, for me, it was quite a clear choice because my teacher, whom I wanted to study with, Professor Barney, teaches in Israel, so mm -hmm. it was a no brainer. Um, but um, I, I think that we have a good, very good music educational system in Israel with a lot of things, with lots of things going on. Yeah. Um, and I enjoyed my six years at the university quite a lot, except for waking up <laughs> every morning. Yeah. <laughs> well, how, do you, how do you approach a new piece? I mean, what's, what's the process of uh, learning a new piece? Um, first of all, you go to the piano and you read the score. And then you... Um, it depends on the style and the type of piece. If, if it has more technical difficulties, then a larger part of the work will be devoted to technical difficulties. If it's um, deceptively simple, but in fact very tricky from a musical point of view, then during the few days, the first few days, you'll realize that you need more time mm -hmm. to devote more time to the interpretation part. And then, after you've done some work at home, you reach the, the point where you must go and perform. Because there's just a certain limit which you cannot overcome unless you perform it live on stage. Mm. And then from there it's it's a it's a repeating process mm. of working some more and performing. Do, do you listen to other uh, interpretation? Uh, yes, uh, yes. Um, sometimes it's really helpful. Uh, sometimes I am stuck. I just don't know how how to approach certain parts of the piece. And it's it, it, it's really something that they can give you a push to to get over this sort of um, mm. blackout. Mm. Um, of all of your teachers, uh, who would you say has the most influence on your uh, career? Or well, absolutely, Ari Vardi. Um, I started studying with him when I was 11, and I finished when I was um, 23. Mm. So it was a very big part of my life, mm. and we kept in touch mm. since then. And he's definitely influenced me the most in all in all terms, yeah, in all mm -hmm. aspects of music making, um, the approach to sound, to the musical text, to the composer, to the overall conception of the, the work. Mm -hmm. um, and also he's such a wonderful person, as a person, so it's, so it's definitely mm -hmm. okay. um, So, I guess he's your mentor? Or well, you um, <laughs> he's the one I go to if I need advice or I need to ask mm -hmm. a question. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, who else has influenced uh, you as a pianist uh, in addition to Ari Vardy? Um, well, several pianists whom I really like, uh, love, would be the more correct word. So, um, Arthur Rubinstein, first and foremost, um, Sadislav Richter, Emil Gilles, um, and Grigory Sokolov. Those four are probably my, my mm -hmm. overall yeah. favorite <laughs> ones. Um, so, when, when did you decide to uh, move on uh, into a full uh, career as a pianist? I don't think there was a specific breaking point because um, I started studying at five. I had my first performance at seven mm -hmm. uh, and my first competition at nine. <laughs> and from then, there was no period when I stopped playing. So, it was a smoother a transition from not doing it full time to doing it full time. Mm. Mm. Um, so, um, if you could choose only one favorite pianist, who, who would it be? Uh, <laughs> that's not one. But I think it's Arthur Rubinstein. His, mm. he, his approach to
to music in, in whatever repertoire he, he performs. Um, th this joy of life and love of music that, that you can hear in every note he plays, and his personality that you can feel even if you just put on a CD and you feel that he's here in the room playing for you. Um, this is something which I think, for me, that's, that's the greatest thing is that an artist could have. Mm -hmm. um, so, do you think uh, participating in another competition uh, soon or you are finished with competitions? Um, I'm hopefully finished. Yeah. One can never know because in a few years things can happen. But um, I've done quite a few competitions. I had um, nine international prizes. Overall, four of them were first prizes. Um, and I think that after, uh, 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 after this competition, after a competition of this scale, mm -hmm. um, I think, I hope That's that will be enough. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, do you think participating in a competition is a must for a pianist who wants to make a, a very good career out of it? Um, well, winning a competition is a, if not a must, but it's, a, it's one of the only things that can push you, mm -hmm. to give this sort of breakthrough, unless you have very good connections to mm -hmm. big names, which of course not everybody has. Um, but I think even nowadays when there are loads of competitions and many people have prizes, still um, receiving one of the top prizes in one of the biggest competitions um, is a very big help towards mm -hmm. getting the career. Um, uh, sorry, I'll just add one thing. That the main thing after winning the prize is not the prize itself, but uh, uh, those are the concerts that you get as a result of the prize. Because that's your chance to be heard and hope mm -hmm. for, for the right people to be in the right place for you. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so, what do you do when you are not playing the game? Um, I read quite a lot. Mm -hmm. I play computer games. Computer games? Yeah, I, I meet my friends, I swim. Mm -hmm. I um, I like learning languages and I translate a little bit. Translate? Yeah. Oh. Poetry. Poetry? Poetry. No, <laughs> from what was the last translation? Um, uh, for the last year I'm doing uh, poems by uh, by Rilke, the German uh, mm -hmm. poet. So I'm doing from German to Hebrew. From German to Hebrew. Um, and I'm just not having a normal life with movies, friends, and mm -hmm. things like that. <laughs> um, so you are going to play uh, Brahms Sonata for two pianos in F minor uh, with Eric Zuber. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us a little bit about this piece? Yeah, sure. Um, Brahms first wrote this piece as a quintet of strings only, with, I think with two cello. And then his friends told him that this music was too robust, too powerful for the strings only to sustain it. So then he did the two piano versions. Version. And then I think uh, after the advice of Clara Schumann, he made the final version, which is the pianos and strings. Mm -hmm. that. So this is the, the the intermediate, the middle version. Mm -hmm. um, it's not as easy as I would have thought, having played the quintet. I mean, not that the quintet is easy, but I hope that mm -hmm. having played the quintet would make playing play, play, not that easier. Is it more but, um, it's it's that just that it's not the same music. It's not the same. Uh, part of it is the same same arrangement of notes in the same hands, but most of it is just it, it is the same music, just arranged mm -hmm. differently for for four hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, can you think of one special uh, piece or uh, event that uh, influenced your career? Well, one special piece for me was uh, the third concert, piano concerto by Bartok. Um, um, I learned it when I was 10, 10 years, old. 10 years old, but I never had a chance to play it uh, before being 18 and when I did have a chance to play it, it was in the final round of another major competition in Santander, in Spain. Mm -hmm. It was with the London Symphony Orchestra, with Rafael Fruber who was conducting, and, and, and for me it was just like a dream come true mm -hmm. of finally, after 8 years, being able to play this piece with such an orchestra and such a conductor, and I forgot completely it was a competition, just had enormous fun. Best experiences. So, what are your plans for uh, the upcoming year? After the marathon, I have a few recitals in Israel, and then I go to Canada. Um, I have various things in England, including a few concerts at the Royal Festival Hall with the London Philharmonic Orchestra.
orchestra, a recital at the Whitmore Hall. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to New Zealand for the first time in April. Um, um, and I have various concerts in, in Germany, uh, a New Year's concert in Germany playing Gershwin Rhapsody and the Concerto the same mm -hmm. evening. Um, and a, a few other things, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, to conclude this interview, um, I'm going to play a short um, game of association. Uh, I will um, um, read a word out loud and, and just say whatever pops up in my head. Right. Um, Bach. A genius. genius. Vacation. Lake. Etude. List. <laughs> love. Um, love. My association with love is love. Home. Israel. And Boris Gilbo. To me, no association with that. <laughs> so it's just me. Okay. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. And we look forward to hearing you in the marathon. Yeah, this thanks. Weekend. And we wish you a lot of success. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much.